In this lecture, we want to practice how to construct velocity polygon using the method of relative velocities. We will review three common examples. In the first one, we draw the velocity polygon for a four-bar linkage for which the angular velocity of the input link has been given. In the second example, we have a five-bar linkage. Since it has two degrees of freedom, we will need two given angular velocities to be able to construct the velocity polygon. In the last example, we see a slider crank mechanism. This time, the velocity of the slider has been given as the input. In each case, we want to accomplish a velocity analysis by constructing the velocity polygon. As a first example, let's construct the velocity polygon for a four-bar linkage. Assume we have a link 2, pinned to the ground at O2. Link 3, pinned to link 2 at point A. Link 4, pinned to link 3 at point B. And pinned to the ground at O4. All the dimensions have been given, including the positions of supports O2 and O4, the length and angle of the input link O2A, and the lengths of links AB and O4B. As velocity information, the angular velocity of the input link has been given. We need to draw the velocity polygon in order to find the velocities of points A and B and the angular velocities of links 3 and 4. Let's start the solution by finding the velocity of point A. Since we have the angular velocity of link 2, the velocity of point A can be written as this angular velocity times the distance from O2 to A. Here is the magnitude, and the direction of this velocity is perpendicular to the line connecting A to O2. Now we can bring it to the velocity diagram starting from OV. For the velocity of point B, we can relate it to point A, whose velocity is already known, in terms of both magnitude and direction. We don't know the magnitude of the velocity of B with respect to A, but its direction is perpendicular to the line connecting B to A. We bring this extension to the diagram to continue VA because it is relative to A. Similarly, we don't know the magnitude of VB, but its direction is perpendicular to the line connecting B to O4. We bring this extension to the diagram, starting from OV, because it is an absolute velocity. Let's call the intersection as point B prime. This vector is the velocity of B with respect to A, whose magnitude we can measure. Similarly, this vector is the velocity of point B, whose magnitude can now be obtained. Now from the velocity of B with respect to A, we can find the angular velocity of link 3. For its direction, we need to put the velocity of B with respect to A on point B to see at which direction it rotates link 3 about point A. Similarly, from the velocity of B, we can find the angular velocity of link 4. For the direction, we need to put the velocity of B on point B to see at which direction it rotates link 4 about support O4. So, here's the velocity polygon, the velocities of points A and B, and the angular velocities of links 3 and 4. In the second example, we want to construct the velocity polygon for a 5-bar linkage. Assume we have a link 2, pinned to the ground at O2, Link 3, pin to link 2 at point A. Link 4, pin to link 3 at point B. Link 5, pin to link 4 at point C. And pin to the ground at O5. All the required dimensions have been given. We have the positions of supports O2 and O5. Since the system has two degrees of freedom, there are two input links, O2A and O5C, whose lengths and angles have been given. Finally, the lengths of links AB and BC. As velocity information, the angular velocities of the two input links have been given omega 2 and omega 5. We want to draw the velocity polygon, the velocities of points A, B, and C, and the angular velocities of links 3 and 4. We start the solution by computing the velocities of points A and C. We have the angular velocities of links 2 and 5. The velocity of point A is omega 2 times the distance from O2 to A. 
Here is the magnitude, and the direction is perpendicular to the line connecting A to O2. Transferring to the velocity diagram, originating from OV. Similarly, the velocity of point C is omega 5 times the distance from O5 to C. Here is the magnitude, and the direction is perpendicular to the line connecting C to O5. Bringing to the velocity diagram from OV because it's an absolute velocity. For the velocity of point B, we relate it to point A. The velocity of A is already known in terms of both magnitude and direction. The velocity of B with respect to A is perpendicular to the line connecting B to A. We bring this extension to the diagram starting from the head of VA because it is relative to A. Note that we don't know anything about the direction and magnitude of VB. On the other hand, we can relate the velocity of point B to that of point C because the velocity of point C is already known. The velocity of B with respect to C is perpendicular to the line connecting B to C. We bring this extension to the diagram starting from the head of VC because it is relative to C. Again, remember that we don't know anything about the direction and magnitude of VB. Let's call the intersection as point B prime. This is the velocity of B with respect to A whose magnitude we can measure. Similarly, this is the velocity of B with respect to C, which we can measure. And finally, this is the velocity of point B, which can be measured as well. Notice that this equation says the velocity of A plus the velocity of B with respect to A is the velocity of B. Similarly, this equation says the velocity of C plus the velocity of B with respect to C is again the velocity of B. For the angular velocities, from the velocity of B with respect to A, we can find the angular velocity of link 3. For its direction, we need to put the velocity of B with respect to A on point B to see at which direction it rotates link 3 about point A. Similarly, from the velocity of B with respect to C, we can find the angular velocity of link 4. For the direction, we need to put the velocity of B with respect to C on point B to see at which direction it rotates link 4 about point C. So here is the velocity polygon. The velocities of points A, C, and B and the angular velocities of links 3 and 4. In the third example, let's construct the velocity polygon for a slider crank mechanism. We have a link 2 pinned to the ground at O2. Link 3 pinned to link 2 at point A. Slider 4 pinned to link 3 at point B which slides on ground. All the dimensions have been given, including the position of support O2, the length and angle of link 2 O2A, and the length of link 3 AB. As velocity information, the velocity of point B has been given. We need to draw the velocity polygon in order to find the velocity of point A and the angular velocities of links 2 and 3. Let's start the solution by finding the velocity of point A. We can relate it to point B, whose velocity is already known. So we bring VB to the velocity diagram starting from origin OV. Velocity of A is perpendicular to the line connecting A to O2. Let's bring this extension to the diagram, starting from OV. Similarly, velocity of A with respect to B is perpendicular to the line connecting A to B. We bring this extension to the diagram to continue VB because it's relative to B. Let's call the intersection as point A prime. This vector represents velocity of point A, whose magnitude we can measure. Similarly, this vector is the relative velocity of A with respect to B at this magnitude. Now, from velocity of A, we can find the angular velocity of link 2. For its direction, we need to put velocity of A on point A to see at which direction it rotates link 2, about support O2. Similarly, from velocity of A with respect to B, we can find the angular velocity of link 3. For the direction, we need to put velocity of A with respect to B on point A to see at which direction it rotates link 3, about the reference point B. So here is the velocity polygon. 
velocity of point A and the angular velocities of links 2 and 3.